Hey everyone, welcome to Mix and Jam, a channel about game development experimentation. Today's project is based on the Super Smash Bros. series. The first Smash Bros. game introduced a character select screen that has been used for every entry in the series. In this screen, you have tokens you can position on the top of the character you want to play with. My goal for this project was to build a similar screen using Unity. So here are the steps I needed to follow. First, I needed to create the grid of characters. I also needed to make a cursor that detects the elements of the grid. I needed to prepare the player slots on the lower portion of the screen. And also, I have to add the token behavior. So first thing was to create an empty game object on my canvas and use the grid layout group. In this way, every element that's a child of it gets organized in a grid. I've used a screenshot of the game as reference, so I can position things correctly. I started creating the layout of the character cell. On the parent image, I've added a mask, so every visual would stay inside of it. After that, I added images for the character artwork, rectangle on the lower part, and also the border. Then, I saved all of the character cell as a prefab. So to generate the characters, I've decided to use scriptable objects. Creating scriptable objects is just like creating a custom class, but it separates each class as an asset file. There's a great video from Brackies explaining more about that. In my case, the scriptable object has a string for name and a sprite for the character artwork. As you can see, with scriptable objects, I can easily create new characters on the project and set their parameters. Next thing was to create the main script. In this one, I created a list of the character scriptable object. I can populate that list by simply dragging the scriptable object I want into the list. So when the application runs, I go through all the characters and run a function that instantiates the character cell inside of the grid. It also changes their name and sprite based on the scriptable object it's receiving. You can see that the artwork is not properly centered, so using the sprite editor, I adjusted the pivot of the image to indicate its proper center. Even doing that, it didn't change much. That's because a pivot on a texture works differently than a pivot on a UI image. The texture pivot is indicated by their pixel position, but the UI pivot is indicated by a scale from 0 to 1. So I had to convert the pixel pivot values on the UI scale. After doing that, the artwork aligned correctly. So I created some more characters and added them to the list to see how everything was going. The last two renders were looking kind of far away. So on the scriptable object, I added a zoom parameter and on the main script, I multiplied the size of the artwork rectangle by that value. Now it was time to make the moving cursor. I created a new image and did a simple movement script for it. After that, I created a new script for the cursor that would indicate what it was pointing to. In this script, I used the canvas graphic raycaster and a new pointer event data. I just needed to say that the pointer event data position was the same as the cursor and do a raycast that would return a list of its results. I checked to see if there was any result and printed the name of the first raycast result to see if it was working. When it was working, I just needed to set the raycast result as the current character in the cursor detection script. Then, I started working on the player slot layout. First thing was to create an object with the horizontal layout group to organize the slots. On the slot layout, I added an image for the artwork and text for the character name, player nickname, and player number. Now, I just needed to show the current selected character in the correct player slot. On the main script, I did a function that receives a player int to indicate what slot it's referring and a character type that would set all of the slot information. On the cursor detection script, I just needed to call that function that displays the slot information, that is, on the main script. For the token object, I created an image that has a script that makes the token follow the cursor whenever the bool has token is activated. 
I also use that bow to make it only detect grid characters when it's activated. Now, I just wanted to do some polish. I added Dutwing to work on some animations. In the original game, whenever you select a character, the slot gets moved a bit down. To replicate that, I've used a do punch position from Dutwing to slightly punch the slot down when confirmed. Then, I started to recreate the animated border that the original game has when the cell is activated. For its animation, I've used Dutwing's do color and looped the tween. I also recreated most of the slot graphics like the base image, the border, and the lower bar. For the menu, I recreated the back button image and icon, the hexagonal bar, and that diagonal image that stays on the top. At this point, I remember that there was also the character icon on the player's lot, so I added that to the scriptable object and added the sprite change on the main script. In the game, when you move the cursor between characters, they do this swipe animation. The way I recreated that was by using a do tween sequence, where I basically send the current image for the left, and when that's complete, I change the sprite and make it come from the right side. Then, I decided to make the grid have less elements to make it look more like the beginning of Smash Ultimate, where you still have to unlock the characters. I also changed the visual of the token and cursor. The last thing was just to create an image that would stay behind the grid and would be exactly its size. And this is how it turned out. This project was very fun to make and was also a very interesting challenge. You can find the link for the project repository on the description. Let me know on the comment section if you have any suggestions for things I should take a look at. I would love to hear ideas from everyone. If you like this video, please remember to share it and subscribe if you haven't. I'll be bringing more content like this in the future. Until the next one!